Greetings. Welcome, my unworthy friends. Please, come closer. Oh, you've heard that one before. Well, look into my eyes, then. Look into the abyss. Look into the abyss that is my eyes. Is that good advice? I don't know. But this is what I felt God told me to tell a friend of mine a couple weeks ago. To look into the abyss. Right, cheerful, you know, pick me up, you know, Joel Osteen type stuff. Look into the abyss. Um, but is that bad advice? And I've been thinking about that. What does that mean to look into the abyss? Now, the Bible talks about the abyss where Polyon comes out or Tartarus and these kind of things. But I guess in another way of thinking, what's the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst that can happen when we make a decision, when we t make a choice, when we or going a course of action. It's always wise to consider the worst case scenario. Um, and if that's not a great plan, or if you don't like that, maybe to rethink the course of action. Um, and so that that was the advice I gave my friend. And I, I've been thinking about it a lot. And it's a kind of dark thing, but maybe it could lead us to something very bright. Um, so. Keep your eyes open. Look into the abyss. You'll see fire. This is going to be a little ditty about Jack dying. When Jack dies, where does he go? Well, actually, this video is really not about hell or purgatory or heaven or any of that. That's another video for another day. But when you look into the abyss, what do you see? This happened for me a couple of years ago, about 10, 12 years ago. I remember we were in Texas. We've been here about 14, 15 years. And uh, I was at a movie theater, which has since been destroyed. <laughs> kind of ominous. And um, I was, we were going through, my wife and I were going through a rough time. And um, I would often fantasize about divorce. And not often, I, you know, it's just one of those, when you're struggling, you kind of think about escapes, if you will. And... Uh, so at that time, I was thinking about divorce, and I was at this movie theater, and God, uh, I think it was before the movie, God was like, Philip, look at it. Look at divorce. You know, and as, as a growing up in a Christian family, no one in the Fanstow family gets divorced, so it was, it was that was never even an option. Um, we've always taught covenant, you know, this is till death do you part, and we took it, take it very seriously. Um, so I was like, well, no, but then I was like, okay, well, I, I, I really considered it. I looked into the abyss that is divorce, and it scared me. Because, <laughs> uh, sure, I mean, every relationship, you have your ups and downs and you have problems. But um, at that time, I think we had two children, maybe three. Um, but I knew it would affect them. It would destroy, uh, in many ways, the kids. And... Uh, and financially it'd be a terrible devastation but then when i really thought about it i would miss my wife we we had our arguments we had our disagreements but i would miss my wife and 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 from that point on i've never fantasized about divorce again because i looked into this and i was like i don't want that <laughs> that's not okay uh and and it, it, uh, around that time and i don't all concurrent maybe but um a few years later maybe I was struggling with something and and I prayed and I, this is a prayer don't pray this in this uh, because God will answer this uh, it's kind of like the prayer for patience don't pray a prayer for patience <laughs> there's a couple of prayers you don't want to pray unless you're really serious about them patience is one um, Lord use me whatever the cost use me yeah, don't pray that one uh, but this one what well, do pray but 
only if you're serious. These are serious prayers. God will definitely answer these prayers. And this one was, I was praying, Lord, show me the consequences of my sin. Uh, a lot of times, I mean, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. All right, but when they look in Proverbs, you see these simple, the fools and the simpletons, they continue on. And they die and they, you know, pierce through and all this terrible stuff. And you read in Proverbs. But so many people continue to do it. I'm thinking about the epic fail videos, you know, people do these stupid things that you're watching it and of course you know it's an epic fail video, but you're watching it and you know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> All right. Um, and and it's not going to be pleasant. It's going to it's going to hurt. <laughs> and uh, but these epic fail videos, so look at the abyss. Look at the the consequences. So I pray the Lord help me to see the consequences of my action because I think a lot of times the, the consequences as a teacher um, this was a hard thing to instill this is a, something we always kind of struggled with instill in, in young I was I taught fifth and sixth grade um, so they would sign the book and it's kind of one of the things we did but by the time they had a consequence they'd have three signings you know one week and three weeks later another week and another signing a couple of weeks after that and then they'd get this citation and you'd ask them why did you get the citation and a lot of times the kids were like i don't i don't know they you know because they they had the sin or you know misbehavior but and then the consequence and there was no connection they couldn't see how those were connected um and and that was hard you know that's where i think spanking i was spanked in fifth grade and it was best one of the best days of my life that's another story for another day but uh, one of the best days of my life was when i got caught stealing <laughs> and lying and got spanked in a public school um in oklahoma and it was best one of the best days of my life but anyway so here's the but that because there was a consequence that's you know i i, I had um shamed my family or i brought shame you know my parents weren't too hard on me but they were they were disappointed and also disappointed my teachers and there's that but then i also got spanked so the, all these consequences were right there with the the sin all right and so it made a very big impact so as as i continued teaching i i would try to come up with consequences that were more immediate so i'd give essays or I'd make it um students do jumping jacks or you know these i right, give them options because at, at a certain point they were like jumping jacks or corporal punishment seriously um yeah these kids are adhd you can't have them stand and do jumping jacks anyway i don't know exactly how i, I, I think at the end i kind of gave them options i was like you can write an essay or you can do jumping jacks you pick you know so it, i wasn't forcing them you know but um but i try to make that connection between the action and the consequence okay so um now it's it's kind of interesting in a way because our when it comes to the abyss or bad things our our society is kind of bipolar in that on one hand people believe are naturally optimistic and positive i think this may be an american thing the immigrants to this country uh came with them the land of opportunity land of freedom so they they came here with this optimistic the ones that are pessimistic probably stayed back wherever right? i mean think about it the, the, the america has been like a self-selective you know only the really the brave and the uh the adventures have come to america for the most part and um but america's optimistic we buy lottery tickets you're more likely to get hit by lightning twice than you are to win the lottery and yet when it's thundering, people don't run for shelter, but yet people run to the store to buy lottery tickets. All right, so we have this very optimistic thing. Uh, There's a movie recently I watched, a good movie, but The Big Short. Highly recommend it. Uh, I, th I think we're in that time. I've mentioned this before, but um, good movie. But one of the, the couple of the guys in it that invest in the housing crash of the 2006, 2007, they invest, they go The Big Short. They short the market because they see it coming. Well, they'd made their money by betting on things, bad things happening. <laughs> and most people underestimated the probability of bad things happening. So they kind of bet toward it and they made a lot of money. Um, so, but America is kind of bipolar. We, 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 we are very optimistic. We underestimate the bad. We lottery tickets and so forth. And yet, at the same time, we celebrate death. We celebrate the apocalypse. I mean, watch the TV shows and the movies and about the zombies and the apocalypse, the end of the world. Um, 
you know, we hum songs. It's the end of the world as we know it. I mean, it just the, even the songs at the beginning of this are the icy fire. That's a that's an apocalyptic song, and yet it's so it's so catchy. <laughs> I see fire. What? Yeah, really? Do we really want to see fire? But and it could, and and young people. I mean, I've seen these stickers on the back of cars. Um, zombie apocalypse uh, response team or something. Um, it kind of reminds me of something in the Big Short that I don't think people are really thinking through. So on one hand, that we're very positive. On the other hand, we're we're obsessed with death. There's a scene where Brad Pitt. Um, he says his, the guys. These are the guys that bet on bad things happening, and uh, they're they're partying. It's a great movie. A lot of cussing. I, I watched it with my parents. A lot of cussing. And, you know, you know, it's funny when you watch these by yourself. It doesn't. Of course, when you watch them with your parents or with your kids, you all of a sudden notice all the stuff that you're like, oh, okay. And there's some um, you know, skin stuff as well. So, but it's it's economic for an economic movie. Uh, fascinating. But I think it it portends for. And it's a great, it's a great movie. Just be aware of that. It is rated R for a reason. Um, however, we we're mesmerized by bad stuff. Both Brad Pitt's a character, yeah. So in the movie, he is um, he's correcting his two young younger guys who are kind of have got him into this investment, and he says, "If you guys win, I don't know exactly how he says this. It's very well done though. But he says, if you guys are right." People are going to lose their houses. People are going to lose their jobs. People are going to... It's going to mean the the destruction or the downfall of the American economy. Um, and so, although they're onto something, they're rejoicing in it. it. It Really, they're betting for people to... They're betting for this housing bubble to burst. And that, of course, eventually is what happened. And the skulls. I don't like skulls. I don't like skulls on my outfits. I don't let my kids wear skulls that I know of. Um, I don't like skulls because skulls are death. They're a symbol of death. Um, and death is a result of sin. It's not something God, that was not God's original intention. Okay. Um, but so we have these, um, even, even like I mentioned, the, the, uh, epic fail videos, uh, these epic fail videos, we enjoy seeing people suffer. I mean, even from rubbernecking on the high, highway, I was driving up to Tulsa a couple weeks ago and wreck and you know I, we're obsessed with death and yet we are very optimistic so i i think we have some problems there now when it, when it comes to the abyss i think every decision we make we have to jesus hints at this he says consider the cost of building a tower and of course there's a lot of other verses about it's appointed unto me and wants to die and after that the judgment you know there's a lot of things in the bible about you got one chance at this you need to take it seriously don't make foolish decisions be wise you know um teach us the number of days that we may uh, 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 apply our heart unto wisdom i believe is verse um and um so this this idea is, is very strong in scripture about you need to you need to really look at the the negative in a way uh, and and help that that contrast. You know, when you look at the abyss, it also helps you to appreciate the the light. You know, there, uh, again, the, there's a movie a couple years ago called The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Uh, not I'm not a real big horror um, fan. Um, but that was an interesting movie, and, and the quote was that I, I can prove there's a God by showing you the devil, uh, something like that. I think paraphrase. But this idea that when you see pure evil, when you see what the Holocaust was about, and you see the documentation on that, um, you're going to believe in demons. I mean, <laughs> and a devil, because that's not that's not human. That's so twisted, so perverted. What Mangala did, and what these other. Uh, uh, so terrible that it, you're going to come away from that going okay yeah there's the devil <laughs> there's demons and then if, of course if there's a devil if there's evil then there's this 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 inverse this uh, this opposite so um anyway i encourage you to to look into the abyss to to when it comes to decisions and that and go, goes from personal decisions relationship decisions uh children uh unfortunately with children as they grow up they they sometimes it's easier to just to let them do what they want and kind of and that was my concern with my friend is he was kind of taking his hands off approach and when you have teenagers i don't know you don't want to be too hard the bible says don't frustrate 
your children. Don't provoke them to anger. But at the same time, to just say, do whatever. I mean, the Bible also says the Lord chastens the son whom he loves. And so there is that correction. We've got to balance that. But um, to just oh, let do whatever you want. <laughs> Look at the abyss of that. What, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I can give you some thoughts. I can, I've seen, I've seen in my own life and in the lives of people I've known, and I've seen things go wrong, and um, and that's one of the hard things about children and young people is kind of conveying to them the consequences of of uh, drinking, of uh, reckless driving, of drugs, and uh, these things. Uh, in fifth and sixth grade, I don't want to give them, you know, do heavy, but at the same time, trying to help them to think, okay, what is the consequence of this stuff? And so I had a couple of stories I share that were kind of PG, but um, it's some serious stuff, and so it's it's helpful to look at that. One second after is a book I was reading um, this past year about EMPs, and um, and it's a good, it's a great book for looking into the abyss what could realistically happen to society uh, and this book takes uh, the case of an EMP if, in case you don't know an EMP um, the potential theoretically and, and, and it's provable but uh, if, if somebody if North Korea or the rogue nation detonated an, a nuke oh, 20, 30, 50 miles above Kansas the the nuke itself wouldn't do any damage on the ground wouldn't kill people necessarily but the radiation this the electromagnetic pulse would cascade through our uh, atmosphere and would cause an electrical storm that would destroy uh, circuits all over the country and, and not just put not just knock out power but destroy the infrastructure power destroy circuits TVs watch anything with a small circuit all right and um, and so this book goes through this and it kind of goes through in a very logical way about this small town in North Carolina uh, and the, where the guy, actually I think the author lived there, so he's writing about his own town. But he's kind of walking through what would happen in the case of this. Um, but you can, you know, if you think about, okay, EMP is one option, but what about a, a nuclear blast? Let's say a nuclear blast goes off and um, let's say a town not even near you, let's say 100 miles away. It doesn't affect you, but what happens to the infrastructure of America or a massive tsunami or a volcano going off? I mean, that's the, the interesting thing about life is the Bible and science, our current understanding, I don't want to get into this too much, but our current, everything is uniformitarianism. You know, we, we what that means is the present is a key to the past. So we have not seen anything crazy going on in our lifetime. I'm 41, haven't seen anything crazy going on in America. So I assume nothing crazy ever will go on, okay? And so this is also, again, the thing called a normalcy bias. We assume everything is going to continue on as it's going now. Well, if you look at history, if you look at the Bible, history is full of catastrophes. And the Bible is full of catastrophes. And not only that, but the Bible predicts more catastrophes. Jesus actually says as we get closer to the end, more and more bad things will be happening. So the, what one second after, and I think a lot of these uh, books and even the TV shows, if you start looking at them as a potential documentary or at least kind of an idea, uh, it will, that looking into the abyss, not as in a like, oh, I can't wait for that to happen, but like a, a zombie movies, for instance. Uh, I've heard that if you are ready for a zombie apocalypse, you'll be ready for anything. Partly true. Um, I, I, again, most people, that when they prepare for a zombie, they just get guns and ammo and all this kind of stuff. I, I think that there's a big spiritual aspect people are missing here. So I definitely recommend you pick up uh, One Second After. It's also an audiobook. Definitely worth a read. and It'll help you kind of think through what could possibly go wrong. Uh, so you can have a plan and be prepared uh, for that. You can't, as a Christian, I don't think we can be prepared for everything. I don't think we're called to be. But I think the Holy Spirit will lead each one of us uh, to prepare in certain ways if we're listening. All right, um, And he'll lead each one of us. He knows what's going to happen in your area. He knows what's going to happen in my area. He knows what he's, the call on me is. And he knows what the call on you is. Um, uh, and so we... But he'll lead us. So if we're listening, if we've looked into the bits, if we consider these things and we're like, okay, I think it's Proverbs 22, 3. It says, a wise man sees danger and, prepare, and hides himself. And the fool uh, doesn't and is punished. 
Um, so I think looking ahead, looking at the business, looking at the possible things. So one second after, I think we'll do a good job of kind of walking you through that. Uh, whether it's an EMP or something else, a natural disaster or a man-made disaster, I think looking at this and kind of seeing the process would be helpful. And it's a, it's a good book too. It's a very entertaining. You you know you can take modest preparations, having some food, fire, fuel, you know, certain things that you know if you had to stay in your house for a month, could you do it? I mean, look at Katrina and, and uh, Hurricane Katrina and these different things. You know, could you survive a month? <laughs> in your house. And I think that's a reasonable thing. Um, buy some ramen noodles. I mean, serious ramen noodles and spam. And <laughs> my kids love it. I mean, we, we practice our survival meals. <laughs> uh, now they actually request it. But anyway, um, and then in relationships and other things, you know, what's the worst thing can happen? Really think through that. Because a lot of times we kind of, we live, I think in film they call it magic realism, where we look at something and we have this unrealistic fantasy idea it's kind of realistic but still fantasy uh, and so we'll make a decision uh, I, I have unfortunately known uh, people uh, that you know um, and I've tried to counsel them over the years you know that they, they they're not in love anymore so they leave their spouse um, had a co-worker of mine do this a few years ago and you know, I tried to talk you know wait a second if you can my wife would say this if you can fall into love you can fall out of love well, that's a romantic idea. The Bible says love is a choice, all right? And, and the emotions come and go, but love is a choice. So I think, you know, that a lot of people don't, don't think through, <laughs> where, where is this going to head? You know, how is this going to affect me? How is this going to affect my children? How is it going to affect, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of unintended consequences. But if you look into the abyss, you'll start to see those. <laughs> and... Uh, and anyway, it would definitely at least make you uh, wiser when you make decisions and give you a, a, a brief moment of pause. And again, if you need help kind of realizing this, watch some epic fail videos and kind of put yourself in that position. You can see what's going to happen before it happens, and you can predict, and yet people continue to do this. So anyway, so that's my little thing. Oh, one last, my, my, my little closing. I've been wanting to do this, so here it is. Um, when I was in Indonesia um, in uh, high school, worked with a missionary there. At one point, we were on this bridge in, in Bandung, uh, uh, Indonesia, Java Island, Java. And there's this bridge, a waterfall, and I, I kind of like to fool around in photos sometimes and ham it up. And so I got on the bridge, and I was like, oh, look at me, I'm going to fall. And I wasn't going to fall. But I also looked behind me before I got up there, and there's a, I, was, I wasn't over the actual waterfall. There's some... Um, the stuff below me well the guy i was with freaked out <laughs> he got really mad and he's like because yeah. i was a teenager my parents had let me go over there to work with him uh mike was his name is his name and but he, he saw something i didn't see that little stuff i thought was behind me now i wasn't gonna fall but if i did fall i was gonna fall into that you know i wasn't really being dangerous I thought, well, the problem is well, he saw what that really was. It was just a very, very thin layer of foliage that was kind of jutting out over the waterfall. So if I'd fallen onto that, I would have gone straight through it into the waterfall and probably died. It was a pretty good waterfall. Um, now, I don't think I was going to fall, but I, I didn't see the, the, how thin that layer was. And he did. Uh, and so sometimes in life people freak out that and they're like warning us and we're like, well, don't be so stupid. Don't overreact. And I kind of got mad at him for overreacting. Later when I looked at pictures and as I've aged, I'm like, oh my Lord, what was I thinking? Um, and fortunately I didn't die. i uh, just kind of give you the end of that story. But um, anyway, so look into the abyss. And I think as you do and you consider that, the, the negative aspects of that, It'll help you appreciate much more the positive aspects of the direction we should be going. And that is, of course, toward the light and toward the calling that Jesus has on us. Thank you. Shalom. Let me know what you think. Talk to you later.